Introduction The Seven Days of Creation in Genesis is a story about the creative efforts and activities in us all as the life forces stimulate the body through the endocrine system. We shall briefly correlate the mythical seven days of creation with the activities of the seven endocrine glands. Glands act somewhat as transformers of creative energies into body forces so as to stimulate the body and mind into action as the energies move through us. The activities of the endocrine system interact with consciousness of ourselves. While the seven days in Genesis present the creation in sequential order, as if they happened that way as a step-by-step -step process, we must not overlook the idea of evolution as each day, or glandular activity, affects the total self. Together the endocrine or glandular forces cause everything to act together as a system. For example, each gland has a part in the creative activity of the gonadal process. This togetherness of actions is reflected in us as a totality of creative life forces comprising what we be at any given moment. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. There is a separation or recognition of the creative forces into two spheres for our comprehension, that is, heaven and earth. While the majority of the creation story deals more with creation of the earth's activities, we should remember that all creations are first in consciousness, or in heaven, for consciousness refers to heaven and earth refers to manifestations of consciousness, hence the need for this first day setting. We are aware of our being, our self, and this brings us to a look at light and darkness, knowing and not knowing, or heaven and earth in a little more detail. At the start of creation God created a duality in consciousness, one heavenly and one earthy. We carry these two, though unknowingly, all throughout life. Time-wise, however, only in this present century have we become aware of the split or dual consciousness in us. The original duality, heaven and earth, in the creation comes down to us where we consciously work with the earthy formed concepts. From this we can see that the things of the world, and in consciousness, are the same as those separated in the beginning. On the physical level light is energy, but at another level light is intelligence, heaven or consciousness, and when condensed in form, it is called matter. Earth or Manifestations of Consciousness Light is composed of photons, units or points of expression, yet moves as waves of influences. These photons may carry a positive or negative electric charge, which by attraction or repulsion combine into electrons and protons, as well as other atomic particles. When gathered together in certain configurations they form atoms, molecules, etc., which in turn form the manifested world of things. From this it can be seen that the light, or spirit, of the original movement of consciousness was separated so as to form the earth. It is thus that the light, when separated, brought the darkness wherein the light is hidden in the things. Knowing was thus separated into manifested and unmanifested knowing, just as happens in our consciousness. What happened then is witnessed in us, and is us, as we find in Genesis 1:26 when God said, Let us make man in our image. The manifested world of things may be taken to be the manifested words of God and the movements, of those things are his creative language. The manifested world of matter is that which matters to us. It is thus that we, by facing the light or facing the dark, come to know the duality in ourselves, and by which we come to know good and evil. It is at this creative level, the gonadal activity in consciousness that we create the forms of our desires, give them life, and by expressing them, they become our temperaments. Expressed over and over in the same way they become habits, or psychic grids. Thus the major part of ourselves is self-created, limited by the extent of our understanding of our desires. 
Therefore we are responsible for our creations of ourselves. Thus, we either manifest the self's created, separated desires, or those which would manifest the unlimited creative consciousness in the creative forces. Here again we come to know good and evil. It seems unfortunate that what we like we tend to call good, and what we do not like we tend to call bad, or evil, yet this too is part and parcel of the knowing process. All of this, however, leads us to pay attention to the activity of the planetary force of Saturn, that force which is active here, and which is the beginning of earthly woes. All of these separated actions manifest in us at the gonadal level of creative activities. It is there that the mind separates light, or the creative force of potential knowing, into seven differing functions. These differing functions are the creative aspects we follow in the succeeding days, through the endocrine system, for the seven colors in light are symbolic of seven levels of creative consciousness in man, as well as in the earth plane and thus also in God's creation. By thoroughly understanding this process, we may come to know that we are one with that creative process, and thus one with that image portrayed in Let Us Make Man in Our Image. Yet the color here should be a warning to us for it is red. And it is possible that the phrase in the beginning does relate to us. The Father of Light In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. How? The mind of God moved, and matter, form, came into being. Mind, then, in God, the Father, is the builder. How much more, then, would or should mind be the builder in the experience of those that have put on Christ or God, in him? in his coming into the earth. For as he has given, let that mind be in you which was in the Christ, who thought it not robbery to make himself equal with God, but living in materiality in the earth, in matter, as a body, but with the mind, with the thought, with the manifestations of a creative force altogether. Is it true that in him, the Father of light, God, ye live and move and have thy being? Or is it purely a physical phenomenon? Is God the creator of heaven and earth and all that is therein? Or did it happen of itself? May thy mercies guide in the understanding that the concepts build it in self in such a manner as to make for the glorifying in the activities of self to the glory of him that is the maker, the giver, the father of light. God seeks all to be one with him. And as all things were made by him, that which is the creative influence in every herb, mineral, vegetable, or individual activity is that same force he call God, and seeks expression. Even as when God said, Let there be light, and there was light. For, this is law, this is love. For, the Father of light has never failed man that has cried in earnestness unto him. It is when individuals have desired their own way that the souls have suffered in the sons of men. In the beginning God moved in mind, knowledge, came into being and the earth and the fullness thereof became the result of same. The Son The Christ The Light Do study creation, man's relationship to God. What is light, that came into the earth, as described in the third verse of Genesis 1? Find that light in self. It isn't the light of the noonday sun, nor the moon, but rather of the Son of Man. The light that cannot fail. This is the Christ. For it has succeeded, in that it has in physical consciousness passed through and attained. And when that light enters, by the individual entity opening the consciousness of self to that abiding presence, the light has entered. What is light? That from which, through which, in which may be found all things, out of which all things come. Thus the first of everything that may be visible, in earth, in heaven, in space, is of that light is that light. Let that light guide thee which has been the light of men since he gave, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. That light ye may know, for it is the light of the world, even in Jesus the Christ. For in the beginning God said, Let there be light. Ye, 5367, are one of those sparks of light with all the ability of creation, with all the knowledge of God. Will ye claim it and will ye apply it in thy daily life? For he came as those activities when man was in the beginning of what we have recorded as that God brought light. 
What is light, then, in that sense? In that city, in that place, there is no need of the sun, nor of the moon, nor the stars, for he is the light, he is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Let there be light, then, was that consciousness that time began to be a factor in the experience of those creatures that had entangled themselves in matter, and became what we know as the influences in a material plane. And the moving force and the life in each, and the activities in each are from the spirit. He, that Christ consciousness, is that first spoken of in the beginning when God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And that is the light manifested in the Christ. First it became physically conscious in Adam. He became the first of those that within self arose to righteousness. Thus may we, as individuals, as we apply ourselves, become aware of that abiding presence as he promised, yea, as he maintained, if I go away I will send the spirit of truth, the spirit of righteousness, and he shall abide with you. And I and the Father will come. Seek ye then to walk with him. That peace he giveth thee. There have come through the various periods of man's unfoldment, teachers proclaiming, this the way, hear the manner, in which ye may know, and yet in the teacher of teachers is found the way, he who even in himself fulfilled the law. For when God said, Let there be light, there came light into that which he had created, that was without form and was void and it became the Word, and the Word dwelt among men, and men perceived it not. The Word today dwells among men, and many men perceive it not. Then, it is necessary for the reliance upon him, who is the truth and the light, who from the beginning was that expressed in, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Not of the Son, but as the Son born of the Father God. Thus the continuity of life itself. For it is the life, the understanding the interpretation of consciousness, and awareness of all. For without him, without light, was not anything made that was made, this applied, this fact conceived, this truth lived in the daily life will put away fear and doubt of every nature. In the study, forsake not, of course, the true way and light. As is given from the beginning, God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and that light became, and is the light of the world. For it is true that light, that knowledge, the understanding of that Jesus who became the Christ, is indeed thy elder brother and yet creator, maker of the universe and thus are ye a part of same and a directing influence. For the earth was first without form and void. So is mind, or matter. It is first a desire, a consciousness, a fluid, a gas. It is united, it becomes, as it were, as a feeling for. So may the entity in itself find the same. For all is born first in spirit, then in mind, then it may become manifested in the material plane. For God moved and the heavens and the earth came into being. God is spirit. Man with his soul, that may be a companion to the creative forces, is of that same source. Thus to grow in grace and knowledge, one applies, one has, one uses one's spiritual self. And with what spirit we apply, we grow also in mind and in body. God moved within himself and then he didn't change, though did bring to himself, the Christ, that of his own being made crucified even in the flesh. There is little or nothing that may separate a soul from being perfect in body or mind, even in the earth, save self. For, the spirit is willing, and all that is necessary for this correction has been given in the earth, in let there be light. Knowledge, power, understanding, subduing of the laws of the universal forces, chemistry, plant life and the use of same, were given, for food, for life, for sustenance. As the Father is as the body, the mind is as the Son, the soul is as the Holy Spirit. For it is eternal. It has ever been and ever will be, and it is the soul made in the image of the Creator, not merely the physical or mental being but with the attributes. For, as is given in the beginning, God moved and said, Let there be light, and there was light, not the light of the sun, but rather that of which, through which, in which every soul had, has, and ever has its being. For in truth ye live and love and have thy being in him. Everything in the earth is ruled by law. He said, Let there be light, and there was light by law. What law? 
of the spirit of truth, of light itself moving into activity, thus becoming creative by law. The body finds itself in a material world of three-dimensional proportions. That which manifests in the mental is from or of a spiritual nature, but the results in the material or physical manifestation depend upon the spirit with which the activity is prompted. This is the law that was begun when it was first indicated, God said, let there be light, and there was light. This was not as an activity from the sun, or light as shed from any radial influence, but it was the ability of consciousness coming into growth from the first cause. The spirit moved, or soul moved, and there was light, mind. Christ, the light, Christ, became the light of men mind made aware of conscious existence in spiritual aspects or relationships as one to another. The mind in the entity becomes aware of longings, innate in the inner self, also the arousing of emotions in the physical attributes of the body, just as indicated as to how these came into being, as self is a part of creative forces or God, spirit, the sun. These are one. The body, mind and soul are one. Their desires must be one, their purposes, their aims must be one. Then, to be ideal. What was that light? The Spirit of God moved, and there was light. That light came. The light of men, yea, dwelt among men as mind with the ability to choose, the ability to abstain, the ability to put away desire, hate, fear, and to put on the whole armor. God in His love and in His wisdom, has sought such as companions with him in the movement, which began from God moved and there was light. In thy movements, then, let thy thoughts, thy purposes, thy hopes, thy desires, ever be towards that of light. Not as light of the sun, or even of the stars, for these are but reflections of that glorious light which is in the Son of God, who is thy light, thy brother, yea, thy Lord, thy God. God, the Father, the first cause, seeking, in the manifestations of self, brought the world, as we, as individuals, observe it about us, into being. Through love, giving to man, his creation, his creatures, that ability to become one with him. That son we have called the son of man, the Christ spirit, the love made manifest in bringing the creature into material being in a plane we have called earth. That son was shown, then, the way, through the love of the Father, and he made manifest that love in giving his earthly, material life for a cause, an ensample, a mediation, a contact with the Father, a mediator for man. Hence in love, through love, God is love, in the Christ consciousness, the Christ spirit, the Son of Man made same manifest in all the experiences through the earth. What is meant by the children of light? They that choose to be guided by his will and do not, through themselves, attempt to manifest self rather than the will of the Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. He said, Let there be light. And there was light. May the desire of my heart be such that I may become more and more aware of the Spirit of the Father, through the Christ, manifesting in me.